Eggs were unhealthy and then healthy. Alcohol is healthy, but also dangerous. Butter was bad. Now it's great. What the hell, science? Hey everybody, thank you for watching D News Today. I'm Trace. Guys, science isn't perfect. It's not. I'm not. We are not, and sometimes it's really confusing. Some studies show fat is good for you, and more studies show fat is bad for you. Last week, the British Medical Journal released a study claiming the effects of alcohol were vastly overstated, and that globally more than three million deaths are attributed to alcohol consumption. Yet, in the same damn week, Oregon State University says drinking wine could help you burn fat. What the hell? Okay. Science isn't law. We in science accept more than one idea at the same time. It's part of the job description. We question things constantly, and that is hard to do. It's called cognitive dissonance, or the idea that two opposed ideas can both be held and understood in the same brain at the same time. That is difficult. There is a reason that we end a lot of our stories with the word, more research is needed, because a single study is almost never enough to ascertain actual science. What the media covers, on the other hand, that's completely different. One notable example of this is butter and cholesterol. As a kid, I remember being taught that cholesterol was bad. All bad. In the 1960s, the American Heart Association warned cholesterol could be bad for the heart. Then, a 1977 study by the Senate Select Committee on Nutrition and Human Needs resulted in the creation of the Dietary Goals for the United States, and cholesterol was included and branded as a baddie. From there, the government, various associations, and media spread the word, cholesterol is bad, vitamins were good. The fourth estate loves sensation and conflict, so people started to avoid butter and eggs and steak and bacon and other foods high in cholesterol. And the thing is, science wasn't actually settled on this point. It was just popular. There's more nuance to this story, and the scientific community protested this decision to include it as a bad thing. The industry also protested, and the American Egg Board made a campaign so people would keep eating eggs. And over the next 50 years, the science slowly pushed people back from the edge. Researchers told people again and again over the years that fat doesn't cause health problems on its own. High-density lipoproteins were discovered in the late 20s, and low-density lipoproteins in the late 70s. That's HDL and LDL cholesterol, good and bad. But cholesterol itself is actually created in your liver, and it helps cells form protective membranes. Plus, it's actually a building block for vitamin D. As dietary science progressed, it's been shown that a low-carbohydrate diet is better than a low-fat diet. But the public's mindset has not been changed. Never mind that an epidemic of heart disease, which in part prompted this scramble for answers, was hitting the country at the time, or that the lead researcher in this 1970s study only studied populations in the US, Japan, and Europe who were selected because they could confirm the results that the researcher wanted. The thing is, if you lived through this period, you'd assume science kept flip-flopping. But that's not the case at all. Instead, the peer-reviewed science was consistent and the media and the public were simply sending mixed messages to each other. Now, new science has finally resulted in the cholesterol guidelines being removed from the 2015 government guidelines themselves. It took a while because science does kind of take a while. Longitudinal nutritional studies can take decades to complete and have to be giant populations who are heavily scrutinized in order to get any data. This is opposed to cross-sectional studies, which are a snapshot of a sample. Still helpful, but very different. It takes time to do good science, but we gotta do it. With this in mind, I would like to say we at D News report what is happening in science as best as we can, but let's be honest, we have to do this every day. We might make a video next year which says the exact opposite of a thing that we just made a video about this week. Hopefully we can spot that and point out the changes over time, because science isn't set. More research is always needed. Do you know examples where science flip-flopped? Do you have some? Put them down in the comments, make sure you subscribe, and thanks for watching D News.